How's it going everybody? Welcome back to my C Sharp pro programming series. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit more fun. Um, we're going to be looking at a g game of craps and all the while looking at a new data type that I have not covered in this series. I have covered the enum type in my um, C++ programming series um, with a lot more depth. But basically an enum, bas um, it's kind of like a class but um, you, you can assign values to it, um, constant values, and it will, it, j it just basically improves readability. Um, for instance, um, well, let me see, how can, I, how can I explain this here? Let me think about this. Um, check my notes here. I, I don't think I wrote anything down on, on explaining the enum type. Um, let's see. Okay, um, so I'm gonna have to come up, come up with this on the fly. I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm sorry to, to stall like this, but um, basically, the the dice names enumeration here. Okay, we have two two enum data types. Um, they're kind of like separate classes. Okay, we have a status, which um, has three potential values here: continue, one, and lost, and dice names which are, are certain values that trigger um, winning and losing conditions within the game. So um, the sums of the dice that would result in a win or loss on the first roll are going to be declared um, in dice names um, right here. Th these will evaluate the win-loss conditions only on the first roll. These are used in the cases of the switch statement, which I will go over in a second. Um, the identifier names use casino um, wording for these sums basically. Um, I did live in Vegas for a little while. I do know quite a bit about gambling. Um, but notice that in the dice names enumeration a value is explicitly assigned to each identifier name. Um, so when the enum is declared each constant in the enum declaration is a constant value of type int. If you do not assign a value to an identifier in the na in the enum declaration, the compiler will do so. So, um, if the first enum constant is unassigned, the compiler gives it the value zero. If any other um, enum constant is unassigned, the compiler gives it a value equal to one more than the value of the preceding enum constant. So, for example, if this was unassigned um, to, if we just just declared it and didn't give it a value, it would be given the value 2 naturally. Um, similarly, um, if we declared tray without a value, it would be given the value 6, one less than the um, next value um, in the enum class. So the compiler will basically implicitly assign 0 to status 1, one to status continue and two to status lost. Okay, <clears throat> so um, these these kind of like if you're not assigning values, we have the value zero here, one and two. Okay, um, so moving moving on now, the enum um, again just has named constants. It it really improves readability, and if you really want to. Um, get an in-depth explanation, check out my C++ um, enum video. Um, I just want to keep this video as short as I can here. Um, so in our craps class, we have the random number, which will generate a random number, which I covered in my last video, and the play function. So we're going to declare a status data type of enum and we're going to call it game status and we will set its value to status continue. Basically we want the, we want the game to play um, by itself and we will set my point to zero and the um, declare another integer sum of dice set that equal to roll dice. Um, our roll dice function which I'll be covering we might as well go over it now. Roll dice basically we'll just roll two random dice um, which we have here between the values of 1 and 6 and 1 and 6. Um, again, if you didn't watch my last video, the second parameter um, is basically the value uh, 1 less than. So again, this will be 1 through 6. 
Um, you could also do that a different way. You could um, put a six there and then add one. Actually, that would have to be zero through six and add one. Anyway, um, so we have two dice integers. We're going to also declare an uh, integer sum and add the two dice together and output what the player rolled and then return the sum, um, the dice, the two dice added together. So back up and our sum of dice. Okay, now we're going to put that in a switch statement with dice names um, being the sum of dice being cast to dice names. Um, basically we're going to test um, these these conditions here if the number is 2, 3, 7, 11, or 12. If they roll a 7 or an 11 on the first roll, they they win the game. Um, and if you don't know how to play craps, well, I'm going to explain this to you right now. Um, basically, you roll two dice. Each dice will have six sides, one through six. And after the dice have come to rest, um, in Vegas, they do need to be thrown and touch the felt on the opposite side of where the person is rolling, but that's kind of irrelevant in this program. Um, if the sum is 7 or 11 on the first throw, you win. If the sum is 2, 3, or 12 on the first throw, it's, we call that craps, you lose. The house wins. And if the sum is 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10, the remaining numbers on the dice on the first throw, um, that's whatever was rolled there will become the point and to win you must keep rolling the dice until you hit um, roll your point and the only way you can lose from this point on after making rolling a point is by rolling a seven so uh, back to our main program here or our, our class bar sorry um, we check to see if it's seven or eleven and first row would basically be a win and if it's two three or twelve on the first roll it is a guaranteed loss sorry mm -mm. Um, I've been up all night it's like 530 in the morning anyway um, and then our default value here basically if none of these cases are true if they didn't win or lose on the first throw we're gonna set our game status to continue and set the sum of dice the roll which we did up here, whoops, roll dice to my point. And then we were just basically going to output the point, tell the player what they need to hit. Um, still in the class, in the play function, um, while game status is equal to continue, because we are on continue now, we, we checked to um, our win and loss conditions right off the bat, um, we're going to roll the dice again and set that equal to the sum of dice. If the sum of dice is equal to my point, again, they win. Um, that's how you win the game. Otherwise, if sum of dice is equal to a 7, then we, we the game is lost. And if the status is 1, we output player wins. If not, we output player loses. And that is basically the game of craps. Um, and our main program just basically declares a new craps class called game, store a new craps data type inside of game, call our play function, and this is just to keep the program um, from immediately terminating once it's finished. So we can run this, and as you can see, now the first roll, player rolled four, so the point will be four. They roll a 10 on the next roll and a seven. Well, if you roll a seven after the point is assigned, you're gonna lose, so player loses. Um, now this program would be easily modified um, if you want to add um, a way to bet on um, the dice. There are a ton of options to bet. There you can bet on doubles. Um, I think it's a uh, pass, don't pass. Um, there's just a myriad of options to bet on, and where you you would want to add those options, um, you would want to add those in main, uh, preferably. In, in my perspective, I would add the betting options in main because we want to keep those out of the play function. So before each roll, actually you probably have to do that in, um, before each roll inside of the class itself. Um, well, th th that's just the way this program is set up. You can set it up to where you can actually make bets between each roll um, in the main program, which is what I would suggest. Um, so that's all we're going to cover for today. 
I want to thank you guys for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you for my next video.